All right, so we're here with Sean. He plays Nightwing, as you all know. So how does it feel to have him front and center? Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah? What's your favorite part about that? Like, I, it's kind of a different dynamic. He's used to being kind of, you know, on his own or, yeah. you know, yeah. beneath Batman, so to speak. But he's his own guy, right? Yeah, I mean, I, it, was, it was a lot of fun just to, to put on the Batsuit, so to speak, um, or literally. But I think, you know, in the booth, obviously, I'm not putting on the Batsuit, but I am taking on the voice, which was so much fun, which I tried to just kind of make everyone laugh with my worst impression of Batman ever. I was going to make fun of Jason, and I thought it would be so funny, and they loved it. Well, now you kind of have to do it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I don't even I don't even remember what I did. It was a little bit like this. You hear that, Minnesota? I do. That that was fabulous. Now, do you walk around the house now going, I am Batman? <laughs> no. Gosh, no. <laughs> I would. All right. Um, so... <laughs> So, Dick Grayson aside, who is your favorite Robin character? Um, I don't know. You don't have to have one. Who's your favorite DC character of all time, other than... Uh, other than Nightwing. I mean, I love Nightwing. I love, I don't know, I'm partial to villains. I love, I played Shrapnel for a little while, and I'm partial to, um, it's my brother. Um, I'm partial to villains. I love them. Who's your favorite villain, then? It doesn't have to be a superhero. I, mean, I love, I love Shrapnel. You're that trap? No, that, that's the next one. Okay, uh, it was the one. You did that one already. What advantages does Dick Grayson have over Batman? I mean, other than the fact that he's kind of gone right now, what advantages does he have that Batman might not? I mean, I think he kind of, uh, sometimes I feel like he understands Batman more than Batman understands himself. And I think there's, um, uh, with that understanding, there's sort of, a, you know, he kind of takes on this paternal slash big brother role especially with Damien I think in this film just because he's he's asked to step up and be the patriarch I think he, he knows what to do as much as he resists doing it and doesn't really want to do it because like you said he wants to be his own he wants, wants, he wants, he wants to have his own identity um, I think he really understands what it takes to be Batman I think he he understands how it feels to have a history with Batman Right, he's seen it, he's experienced, he's watched it. Yeah. Okay. So he can empathize, I think, with a, a lot of the traits. Well, the whole family dynamic, so to speak, has yeah. changed now that he's gone, so he had to, like you said, step up. Was there any other huge dynamic shift other than the fact that Batman was gone that you noticed that took place, that you can tell me? Well, I can't really, of course, <laughs> I can't really tell you that much. I mean, I, I was blown away just sort of, like you say, this familial dynamic, you know, sometimes dysfunctional familial right. dynamic, which we all know that very well um, but I think the subcurrent is loyalty and love and they have each other's backs and um, I love this film because there's so much going on and there's there's so many you know ups and downs with the characters and the stories and it just kind of all seamlessly comes together which um, which is really a delightful thing to see well that's what we like to hear well I look forward to the screening it's been a pleasure nice to meet you <laughs> see you that's it for Batman Bad Blood. Thank you to all the creative artists, the designer, and all the great talent that we saw here today. And make sure, guys, to check us out again soon for another screening or maybe even an interview. And, of course, the unboxings here at Midtown Comics.